<laughs> Hello, it's good to see Hi. you again. Yeah, we so look a little we, different today. We do look a little different today. We're doing the Steve and oh, Steve and Nicole show with producer Bert. And uh, we are practicing our social distancing. So we are all in our uh, home studios. As you can see, Steve's in the actual studio. And uh, Bert's in his home studio. And I'm in a spare bedroom. But, you know, that's how life goes when you have to work from home, isn't it? It is. You actually look good in your home spare bedroom. And Bert, hey. hi. Good to see you from afar. Hi. As Nicole said, we're all being socially conscious and socially distancing ourselves from one another. This is a first for us, as the, everything we do on this show is a first for us. But we have never done a remote broadcast, which is going to change how we have to interact with one another. Because as everybody knows, Nicole and I feed off of each other's energy. And sometimes we just go based on body language. Today, we actually have to listen to each other. I know. And that's I don't be know. Really hard. Yeah, I feel like maybe we'll talk a lot over one another, and people won't hear us. We're just really going to work on this because I feel like this is what we're all doing right now, right? There's uh, webcam meetings going on left and right with everyone, and so adjusting to this is what we're all doing. So we want to entertain you while we try to sort this out ourselves. <laughs> And before the show started, you would see me over here going. <laughs> and finally, Bert and Nicole were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm not used to seeing myself on camera. I have to get this out of my system. And it's still not out of my system. Like, I want to sit and make funny faces at the camera. Because when we record, we can't normally see what we look like until post-production. So this is very awkward. I'm intentionally not looking at the screen because if I do, I'm going to make funny faces. I know. I look like Casper the Friendly Ghost here. You well, kind of do. Can yeah. you let me know what sort of powder you're using? Because yeah. I like the complexion. This is Maybelline's new Ode to Ghost. Oh, I like it. And I don't look pale today for the first Wait. time ever. I'm <laughs> well, uh, how's everyone doing? You know, we are good. It Just to jump right into it, talking about coronavirus, we know it's what is on everyone's mind. We're obviously going to talk about it for a couple of minutes here. We don't want to ignore that it's happening. Uh, we know that it's causing a little bit of anxiety for people. Other people, they're like, meh, I'm an introvert. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Yeah. The extroverts out there, they're dying. They can't wait to get back out into the public and, and make new friends. Um, but remember, you can make friends right here at the Stephen Nicole Show with producer Bert. Uh, join us on Instagram, Twitter. Where else are we? The YouTube. Yeah. Soon to be on the TikTok when we can get together. Oh, yes. We're going to be on the TikTok. Yeah. But yeah, use us. Uh, our page as a place to uh, chat with one another. Our only ask is that you be kind to one another when you are talking on our page. Uh, one of the things we were talking about before our show was that in times like this, when people don't trust leadership, uh, they start to panic. And when people panic, they get fearful. And when people operate out of fear, that's when the hate comes out. And the one thing we don't want on our show ever um, is hate being directed any direction, whether it's us towards a certain individual or a certain group, and definitely you towards us. Um, we want this to be a place where you can just come, have fun, be safe, enjoy yourself. Um, and over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to be live a little bit more than normal uh, because we want to keep you entertained. This is a great opportunity for you to join us, for us to join you, listen to what you have to say. Uh, we're going to be announcing something at the end of today's broadcast that I'm going to be starting probably tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but for now, Nicole, what else? How are you doing? What's going on in your world? You know, I'm doing good. I uh, I think we're today was a day. Today was day one of our family really figuring out what was going to happen. So I have a high schooler who um, is home now. Although it, it would have been his spring break this week, so I feel like until we get to the you know all all schools in um, Minnesota, which is the state that we're coming to you from, um, have been. Um, canceled and then after their breaks um, the assumption is that they will move to online learning and I think that'll be an adjustment 
Um, my husband and I, today was the first day that we both fully worked from home. Um, and that was a major adjustment to have us both here. And it took us, you know, a couple hours to figure out how this was really going to go, you know. Um, and I think we're going to make some more adjustments and continue to make more and more adjustments as everyone else is to try to figure out how you do this. But um, Well, if I'm you ready. ever need I'm help ready. in learning how to adjust, just let me know. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, both my husband and I work from home full time. He works from the first floor. I work from the third floor. And we make it a point to not see each other all day. Otherwise, yeah. we would get really sick of each other really quick. Um, <clears throat> so one little tip for people is make sure that if you and your spouse are both working from home, do your best to not interact throughout the day or just minimize that interaction so that you're not driving each other crazy by 3, 30, 4, 5, whenever you get done with work. Um, a little bit of space is probably good for you. I agree. I agree. Bert, how well, are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm an introvert, so I was made for this. <laughs> I am right there with you, my friend. Uh, and Nicole, I totally interrupted you because I, I wasn't able to see your body language. I know. It's totally fine. I was going to say, you know, what gets me through most scenarios that feel like they're out of my control is humor. And so yes. I found a article that I'm sure everybody, you know, is finding their own um, ways to navigate through social media right now. I'm making it a point to check it a couple times throughout the day, but I'm trying very hard to um, stay off of it because it's becoming overwhelming. Obviously, I want to hear the right updates from the right people when I need them, but um, I did find this article, and I think uh, Bert has it here, but it is from um, Filter Free Parents, and it was called 20 Coronavirus Tweets That We All Need to Hear Right Now to Make Us Laugh So We Don't Cry. And I... Uh, I thought maybe it would be funny to talk about a couple of these today because they they truly crack me up a lot. So uh, I'm so excited to see them. Nicole did not pre-share these with me, so it will be my live reaction seeing them right along with you. That's good. So and Bert let's give a huge shout out to Bert who is running a live stream because we're connected via Skype, and then our Skype is connected into your Facebook. And Bert is going to screen share to show yeah. you the memes. So props yeah. to you, Bertrude. Yeah, props to Bert. Like, this is incredible, number one, that you're able to do all this. My gosh. All right. Well, so you can see number one on there, and it says, uh, watched the news today. Zero stars. Do not recommend. <laughs> I actually told one of my coworkers that. I uh, private messaged her at 3.30, and I said, whatever you do, don't watch the news tonight. Yeah. Zero stars. Do not yeah. recommend. Just ignore it. Just let it go. Anyway, the next one was uh, this person said, I'm regretting every sweet pea, cucumber, melon, Japanese cherry blossom bath and body work sanitizer I ever threw out. <laughs> it's the truth. I think when I was in high school and beyond, I bought every scent possible and had all of those little hand sanitizers. Where are they now? Anyway, gone. It's funny because it's true, and this is no joke, approximately two weeks before the coronavirus outbreak, I yeah. threw away about three bottles of Bath and Body Works soap because I didn't know how old they were. I was like, are they a year old? Are they from this last Christmas? Are they five years old? It's better to be safe than sorry, and I just threw them out. Yeah, Marie Kondo came out, and we Marie Kondoed every basket in our bathroom and pantry and everywhere now i feel like damn you marie kondo i could have had so much sanitizer she needs to come out with a new book what to save for a pandemic, a pandemic. <laughs> yeah yeah anyway i think we've all seen the image of that little kid who's like licking the bar there my gosh anyway the next one makes me laugh it says told my kids that the t-rex died off because it couldn't wash its tiny hands and they've been <laughs> in the bathroom scrubbing for at least five minutes <laughs> oh that one made me laugh anyway i i don't have to go through all of these however uh oh a few them, more i'm yeah, so yeah. entertained right now yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, so uh, anyway, the, the one where it says, my grocery store had plenty of toilet paper and bread, but they were completely sold out of Jello and salsa. I'm confused how my 
community is preparing for this Armageddon. <laughs> I guess I don't get it either. It is weird, though, going into the grocery stores and seeing what people have picked over. Like, they are going after the meats and the cheeses, let yeah. me tell you. We went shopping at 1 in the morning. And it's I because know. we had just returned back from vacation. We went shopping at 1 in the, in the morning. There was, like, no chicken, no beef, no lunch. I can understand lunch meat, but there was no cheese. Everything was picked over. I know. There's one number 11, Bert, when it comes down. This guy said, quarantine diary. Day one, I have stocked up enough non-perishable food and supplies to last me months, maybe years, so that I can remain in isolation for as long as it takes to see out this pandemic. Day one plus 45 minutes. I'm in the supermarket because I wanted a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's funny because it's mm-hmm. true. We had already gone shopping and we were coming back from somewhere. I forget where. And I was like, we have to stop at the grocery store again. My yeah. husband's like, no, we don't. We spent way more than enough last time. I'm like, but if the pandemics last too long, we need more coffee and more creamer. We are stopping now. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we stopped. Yeah, I have so much creamer in my fridge. Let me tell you, it is stocked up. Anyway, this next... I know where to go. Yeah, you can, yeah, come on over. Uh, The next one says, number one of night, number one of no sports. My wife and I just had an hour-long conversation. She's really nice. Apparently, she works in the (laughs) medical field. Also, TVs turn black when they go off. (laughs) I love that one. <laughs> yeah, I heard another uh, uh, somewhere else, but someone was talking about um, just had a conversation with this lady next to me. Apparently, she's my wife. I found out that her favorite color is yellow. Who the hell likes yellow? <laughs> I've seen something similar of day two of no sports. I met this wonderful lady on my couch. Apparently, she's the, apparently she's my wife. She seems really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, anyway, I, uh, it's funny because, um, you know, again, you read through all of these and you just realize, like, everybody's searching for something to laugh at, right? Mm-hmm. And that's good. It's a good thing. And, and like we said last week, during times of stress, you and I go to humor. Totally. Mm-hmm. Which is okay. such a great therapy. It's. I'm just going to call out again. It's so weird to not have you here poking me. I, I know. And, and putting your hand on my back to tell uh-huh. me to be quiet gently. Uh-huh. And, and now I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even see you because I can't look at our, our screen. Otherwise, I'm just going to stare at myself and make funny faces. I know, I know. And there's like a little bit of a delay. So I, I want to watch my lips move. But I actually just have to like talk and not watch my lips move. Anyway, I'm pretty sure... This is what happens when people are in. That's why they shut their cameras off, right? When you're in a meeting, you just want to look at other people and not yourself. Well, and that's okay. Correct. If you go too far, yeah. Stephen, we'll just, you know, turn you off there. That's right. Oh, oh, I like that. <laughs> you know, the other fun part is, is we're on a seven second delay so that Bert can bleep us out in case any of us say anything inappropriate. Oh. So what we see is about seven seconds delayed from what you see. So if you hear the bleep, you know that's Bert taking over. <laughs> He has stepped yeah. in. And so, I just want to point out, I totally made that up. That's not true in any way, shape, or form. He's, like, panicking down yeah. there. What? I'm like, what's in here going, yeah. I don't have a bleep button. Dang it. Where's my bleep button? Yeah, we need, like, a mer. <laughs> yeah. That would be uh, such a great idea. Especially for us, because there are times when Bert has to bleep us out. I know. So, uh, have you guys been thinking about uh, cooking more than normal since you are home and and quarantined a little bit? Yes. I actually have. And I'm going for comfort food. This whole diet we were on completely died the day we went grocery shopping. And I thought about what it is I want to make for the next six months because we're going to be quarantined. And I thought, I want soups, I want carbs, I want my pizza. I went right back to my staple comfort foods, which I guarantee everyone else in the country is doing right now. Diets are blown. Same way. I saw this article, and and I think Bert's going to pull at least the picture. Actually, I think it's just one picture. But yes, that's it. So those are not mine. 
for clarification, but someone posted that they always go to their comfort foods during times of stress and they made hard boiled eggs with peanut butter and jelly in them. And they said, don't judge. Have you ever tried this? Hard boiled eggs with PB and J. Anyway, it super grosses me out, but not enough that I probably wouldn't try it. I mean, I'm not going to make them, but I would probably try it somewhere. I will but... actually make them tonight. I'll give okay. the eggs time to cool overnight. I will make a PB and J egg. So what would it be like a PB and J deviled egg? Yeah. Well, you're stuffing yeah, except... the egg. Except the, I think the deviled part is actually the yolk, and there's no yolk there. Like, it's oh. just a cup of the white. Okay, I'm going to try it. Anyway, yeah, so it made me think about all these weird things that I think people eat that probably to everyone else or maybe people outside of their family or whatever is really odd. So um, when I, uh, in a former job, I had someone who said her family used to make peanut butter and mayo sandwiches and that that was like a big thing in their house i have never had a peanut butter and mayo sandwich ever have you ever had a peanut butter fluffer sandwich i don't know what fluffer is what is fluffer so it's peanut butter and then it's the fluffy fluffy marshmallow whip and you put that on bread and it is divine it's called mm. a peanut butter fluffer i have marshmallow whip here do you have peanut butter and do you have bread of course I do. Then you are set for your first peanut butter fluffer. How sticky is that in your mouth? Oh, I wish it's actually I not too bad. Had... I should have made one before we went on air. I should have told you about this food before we went on air just to get... Re... Now I kind of want you to like step away and go make like a half <laughs> sandwich like, just so we can see your reaction. Fluffer sandwich! Nicole's back! <laughs> Uh, when I was a kid, we also used to eat, like, uh, probably way too much, but a lot of Chef Boyardee. ABCs and 123s were our jam. And we would crunch up sour cream and onion chips all over top of our bowl of Chef Boyardee so that we could eat it with all those sour cream and onion chips in there. Mm -mm -mm, that was good. I was more of a ravioli guy. Plain old Chef Boyardee ravioli. You cannot go wrong with it. And now that I'm a little bit older, I still eat it, but I doctor it up a little. And I... by doctor it up, I mean I put a little pepper in it. That's all. <laughs> but it's so I, good. I do not remember the last time I had actual Chef Boyardee. Oh, Ooh. my Lord. You need a peanut butter fluffer and a can of Chef Boyardee ravioli pronto. Yeah. Yeah. Did, do you guys eat spam? No. Yeah, so this is like a thing. People are buying a lot of, because, you know, if you read these articles, or they're like things you should be stocking your pantry with. It's like tuna fish, which is funny. Why do you say tuna fish? Tuna is a fish. Shouldn't you just say tuna? Anyway, tuna, I don't say like beef cow. I'm going to have a bunch of beef cow or chicken poultry. Anyway, so people should be getting tuna, and they should be yes. getting spam, tuna fish and spam and, like, corned beef and hash that sort of you know long-standing pantry staples we do eat tuna fish on occasion but we don't we we don't eat spam i've never had spam the people of hawaii are totally prepared for this hawaii is the largest consumer of spam and spam is made here in our home state of minnesota and yes. they have always been huge spam fans oh say that four times fast spam fans Huge it's actually one family. of the number one sellers in Hawaii. I, do you think that's because of the cost to like import beef? I have a feeling that, I mean, pork is pretty cheap in Hawaii, but whenever we visited the price of beef, so like steak, hamburger, it's astronomical, but pork, spam are, they run a plenty. Wow. Are there any like super weird things that you eat that you think are normal, but other people might not? I don't know if it's abnormal, but I really love sauerkraut. Oh, and yes. I think it was you who 20 years ago taught me this, where you take sauerkraut and you mix it with like cream of mushroom soup oh, and a yep. little bit of milk. And it yep. just tampers down that sour flavor just a teeny tiny bit. Yes. And the first time I ever made it for my husband, he was like, what the hell are you doing? Because so he doesn't like sauerkraut to begin with. And now I'm mixing sauerkraut with two different types of creams. 
he had no idea what was going on, but he actually really liked it. You put that down and then put some Laurie's seasoned salt, like brown some pork chops after you yep. put Laurie's on them and make your bed of the sauerkraut with the cream of mushroom soup in the milk and then put those pork chops on top and cover it tightly with foil to keep all that goodness inside and bake it. That is exactly what I do. I learned that recipe from you so long ago yes. and it has become a staple in my diet. Comfort, comfort, comfort food smeared oh, over. It is so good. Ooh, yummy. <sighs> I'm trying to think if there's any other weird foods that I like. I'm pretty simple. I love soup, as you know. Nicole hates soup. So I make a lot of chicken noodle, a lot of creamy chicken dumpling, a lot of creamy chicken wild rice, pea soup. I love pea soup. I know pea soup is one of those things where people either love it or hate it. Uh, and yeah. I love the pea soup with a nice big old ham hock in there. Man, I really sound like a Minnesotan tonight. Sure. Like you just grab your ham. ham hock and throw it in your pea soup. Throw Probably. a couple of fresh veggies. Why am I talking Southern? We don't talk Southern up here. Happening with us right now. Uh, it's because you're not here to put your hand on my back and tell me to calm know, down like, and stop talking. Me nudge you into another direction. Every once in a while, Nicole has to like tap my leg and say, shut up. We're moving on. We're moving on. Oh, oh so, man. Those are my comfort foods. I also have an affinity for saltine crackers. We did buy like six boxes prior to the coronavirus takeover because I can sit down and just eat an entire strip as my breakfast and an entire strip as my dinner. Uh, my dad, my, my dad, oh, go ahead. My dad used to do a giant bowl of vanilla ice cream and then crush up saltine crackers in that vanilla ice cream and eat it. So no. In with the sweet of the vanilla ice cream. <gasps> I do love that. That is very oh, good. You do like weird stuff. Potato chips inside of your Chef Boyardee crackers in your vanilla ice cream. Just what see. else do you have hidden in there? Bert, what is your secret? Um, I love just a bacon bit and mayonnaise sandwich. Oh, that would be good. That's not abnormal to me at okay, all. Okay, then here you that go. Sounds delicious. Sam's Club breadsticks, when they're hot, dipped in ice cream. Okay. Oh, see, <laughs> here you guys go again dipping stuff in ice cream. And you're not... It's like the people who dip their French fries in Wendy's Frosties. No. Um, no, that is... Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. That's why God made ketchup. I love ketchup, too. I put ketchup on everything. I do have Dorothy Lynch salad dressing. and It's also known as a condiment, and I put it on mashed potatoes. Oh, that would that's be really good. good. It's like a creamy French. Yeah, I used to put Western dressing on my steak before I figured out how to cook a steak. <laughs> Western dressing on a steak? Well, you know, it was like my version of A1 with a lot more sugar, probably. Oh, I love A1. I will put A1 in my potatoes. I love making just plain old noodles and then dumping A1 sauce on them. That might seem weird to people. Oh, there's a weird food I like. I just thought of it. I really buttered love your A1, noodles, I guess. Buttered noodles with A1 sauce. Mm. That's it. Macaroni noodle or spaghetti noodle. You boil it, then you put a little bit of butter and milk in a pan and you cook it in the milk and butter for a while and then you throw a one all over it it is so good mm. nicole what is with that face you haven't even tried it yet pass. <laughs> after this uh quarantine i'm gonna make it for you for dinner mm, how about we just have fluffer sandwiches instead <laughs> how about not if I was there, I'd be gently touching you on your back. You oh. totally would. It wouldn't be gentle either. It oh. would be like a nudge into my side, like, shut up and move on. Is, is that my cue to do that? <laughs> oh, man. That's actually probably a good idea because I can't stop staring <laughs> at myself on camera and I want to make faces. All right, Nicole, what's your next topic? Because I'm just going to, like, wrap us into a circle. Yes, my next topic is, you know, trying to get myself to just look at things that make me smile and make me laugh. So I sent Bert this article. So it was a BuzzFeed thing and it was plastics 
stuff that reminded me of my childhood. So Bert, I think, is pulling them up right now. But um, it, well, yeah, 28 cheap plastic pieces of crap that remind me of <laughs> Right. But uh, so the first one there are those those pop up things, which actually it's true. Did they even have a name other than those pop up things? I don't even know that they were like a real I who knows what they were really called. But I feel like everyone had them and you'd fling them all over the house. And then the the next one is like my grandma's coin purse. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I swear mine gave me like 24. Any gift shop. Yeah, they would have like the name of your favorite water park on it. Going to Rainbow Falls in Stevens yeah. Point, Wisconsin. I bought one. I still remember it was purple. Yes, that's totally true. It did say Rainbow Falls on it. I had one. Anyway, the next thing were those weird plastic finger monsters, which oh gosh, I, I have no idea where they came from, but I told we totally had those. <laughs> if you remember when Perkins had a little well, uh, it had the little cute well. plastic toys in them. That's where you would get those little finger monsters. That, and every time I left the dentist's office, they had a wishing well or like a treasure chest. And you could like dig through the treasure chest after you like got your teeth cleaned uh-huh. up. And I could, t- you totally get cheap plastic stuff like this. All I can think of when I've seen the last three items is, oh, they would all be germ collectors. And right now we're trying to avoid germs. Oh, this is reminiscent of our more carefree use. <laughs> Oh, okay, keep going because these are fun. I know. So these were the essential Halloween accessory, those like mm-hmm. stick on fingernails. I remember I was a witch for Halloween and I did totally have the fake witchy fingernails. Uh, anyway, then the next one were those plastic jump ropes <laughs> and I could hear it hitting click, the pavement, click, clicking, click, clicking. Click. And then you'd miss it and it'd slap against your shit and it burns so bad. Mm-hmm. Oh. Could you guys? Do you remember jump rope? For, jump rope for heart. Oh my gosh! Yes, I remember jump rope. Oh, for heart. People they would don't jump do for that heart. anymore. Yes, that was the thing. Okay, the next one are those little tiny butterfly clips. I'm sure you guys probably weren't pinning your hair back, but maybe you remember that people had them, and you would do little sections where you have like three or four mm-hmm. of them, like all clips. Oh. And- Oh, I butter. wanted them so bad, but uh, uh, I didn't have long hair. But I do remember seeing them and thinking, oh, I would like to put those in my hair, too. Uh, so the toe destroyer, little tiny brushes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very... I don't remember those. You would get them with Barbies, oh. too. Yep. yep. Oh, the little fake hair brushes. I know. I thought it was like some sort of a pedicure product. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, the multi-clicky pen. You guys don't have one of these that I take real show notes on. Nicole, your clicky pen is sitting in the drawer here in our studio. Oh, I left it there? How awkward. You did. But I actually have a few of those. For Christmas one year, I gave all of my coworkers an Amazon gift card along with a four-colored clicky pen. And oh. they were more excited about the four-colored clicky pen than the $50 Amazon gift card. I love my four colored clicky pen and you'd totally try to like jam them all at one at time. One time. <laughs> <laughs> so Tokyo Pen Shop actually I think is where you can get these now and you can actually choose if you want a pen, a pencil, a little marker or whatever and then what color in there. You can totally customize them. You remember oh, the- can you link that up yeah, to our website? I will. You sh- Do you remember the pencils that were clear and had the little segments of lead and after yes. one came out you could pop it out pop and like it out. stick it mm-hmm. in the butt and like get the next one out i <gasps> think they have those too oh those were the greatest pencils ever those but were i would get too excited to swap them out so before the first piece of lead was even gone i was taking it out and jamming it back up into the top and let's be real they ended up in the garbage just like everything else those were the fidget well, so- spinners of the day yeah I they think were so- were like colored pencils too mm-hmm. like they were like different colors inside and they smelled like plastic but you believed it was like ooh banana oh. ooh cherry or whatever yeah i yeah. still have a pack of mr sketch markers up in my office and every once in a while when i'm bored i will just like open them up and be pretend i'm a kid again i'm like sniffing did you know this is a crisis of epic proportion. Everyone pay attention. 
<clears throat> the yellow no longer smells like lemon. It smells like banana. I know. I turned around and wrote that mistress sketch a sternly worded letter with that yellow banana marker that is completely inappropriate. <sighs> I wonder why they did that. I don't know. It's probably cheaper to produce banana scent than lemon scent. Maybe. I think we need to move along or I'm just going to start ranting about that stupid banana marker. Well, we can fast forward through. I mean, gel pens, those were pretty awesome. I still love a good gel pen. I do too. And I feel like everybody had, oh, I feel like Bert's got, oh my gosh, Bert. <laughs> of course. You I wish I were in my office. I would pop mine up too. <sighs> What else is on our list? Because I'm so excited to see what's on um, here. What What is this magic toy? A squirt. We like a water squirt. Gun. Oh, Everything yeah, matters. yeah. Move along, Bert. Those color-changing spoons that when you put them in your milk, they would turn color, but only like one time. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. Do you remember uh, hyper-color t-shirts? Oh, my God. And then you'd sweat or you'd know who all the sweaty people were in school because it'd be uh -huh. like dark purple, light purple. Yep. Or it's like a blue with a yellow highlight when it would get warm and you could see everyone's yellow pits. That was probably the worst design on their part ever. ever. Silk shirts were also really popular when I was in high school. Maybe middle Me school. Me too. And I remember going to a middle school dance and I was dancing with Brent. And he is one of my total Facebook friends, Brent. But we were dancing probably more like this in high school and he had on a hunter green silk shirt. I had the maroon. Yeah, they were pretty popular. That's when like hunter green and, and that maroon color were very, very popular together. Remember people would decorate their houses with that color scheme and all oh, it looks so beautiful. Now I look back on it, I'm like, that is so trashy. That's two yeah. clicks away from a trailer park. It's like a wallpaper border with ivy. Yes, I yes. Do remember that. Oh, gosh, the throwback. I know. Super I popular. I still want to do the Ivy in my house. I yes. don't know why, but I have an affinity for it still. So those ultimate rulers, I think we still have one of these in our, like, crayon bin somewhere, you know, that you could, like, trace, even though your crayons were way too big. But anyway. Oh, my God, that phone. So I had that phone in my bedroom. And when it would it would just like glow on the inside anyway it was a super fun phone and I got the longest cord possible so that I could like walk all the way around my room and like be talking to my friends and like be in my closet and then I could like go back out to my bed and anyway how often did your parents have to tell you late at night get off the phone in a way when I started calling that psychic hotline because oh, my lord no you did not you that the first 90 seconds were free and there'd be like a little tone and what was their name Miss Cleo so Miss Cleo was like the coolest hotline psychic right and so I would call and they would like just get to the juicy tidbits like right when my phone would be like but I'd be like, ooh, I bet like mid sentence, I'm not even making it like a full second. So like nothing's ever really going to happen. And then the phone bill came and it was like $356. And I clearly had not hung up at the burnt Miss Cleo beep at all. I just kept listening. Anyway, I think my phone did get taken away. At that so I'm curious now, what did you learn from Miss Cleo? She told me nothing that I didn't already know. It was like the vaguest, like, gypsy fortune teller stuff ever. Like, you're a good person, and your path is actually right in front of you. Like, they were all like no. the For $356, did you ask her for a refund? Mm-hmm. Oh, take a drink. Sure. Sorry, I was getting a little worked up about That's it. That's okay. Anyway, anyway, I think my phone got taken away at that point, but... That's probably a good idea. Way to go, Jan. Way to take it away. Jan is my mother-in-law. Norma Jean is my mom. Norma Jean. Sorry, sorry, Norma Jean. I get them wrong all the time. Yeah, that's all right. Here's to you, Norma Jean. Way to take that phone away. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well, anyway, jelly bracelets, jelly bands, those were a thing. And then those... Jelly shoes. 
the markers that had the like stamper at the end that was a thing oh those were awesome yes jelly shoes there they are those were super popular except they always had like a honeycomb pattern in the heel and you'd get rocks like wedged up in there so then when you'd walk it'd be like mm-hmm. like clicky that and... would drive me crazy yes uh anyway VHS tapes, you can, like, imagine opening the VHS tape, the, like, the, con- you know, the box. The plastic okay. container that they would yeah. come in. That's what the fancy movies came in. The cheap movies just came in a cardboard mm-hmm. box. <laughs> That's true. You just yep. shake them out of the cardboard box. Anyway, those click clackers, I think we had several of those. Those were probably in the wishing well at the oh. dentist office. It is so fun going down memory lane. I hope the viewers, uh, if you're if you're watching right now, put in your favorite memories too. What were some of your favorite toys? Exactly. Oh my gosh, these Alpha and Omega of Cups, right? Do you remember the like collection of glass mm-hmm. glasses? I think you could even get them at like McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And Hardee's and had like, the Smurfs. Yes, and the Smurfs. And I think we had, oh, I'm trying to remember. I think we might have had the Cabbage Patch doll ones. Oh, anyway, we had those glasses and they were, I always wanted those glasses. Me too. Yep. Anyway, those bowls that had the straw, I was not cool enough to get one of those, but. Yeah, me neither. Way to go, mom. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> those weird baby bottles where the like liquid would be gone and you never know like what happened there. Uh, Tamagotchi. Did you guys have Tamagotchi toys? I had it for a whopping like five minutes and it annoyed the crap out of me. So I took the battery out. Yeah, I did not have one of those, but I think my sister did. I remember her, I think, having one. Um, the uh, next do one... you remember the Furby? Oh, because you yes. lived with us during the Furby craze. Yes. And didn't it like start to square? Wasn't that part <laughs> of the like thing is that it would train itself to cuss? Well, we never got ours to cuss, but I don't know if you remember, uh, we got really sick of the Furby, so we put him in the cupboard, and we could still hear him in the cupboard going, me, tai ta, me, tai ta, yum, 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 <laughs> and we left him up there until the battery finally died. She eventually <laughs> died. Oh, I remember the Furbies. Ooh, they were kind of creepy. They totally were. Oh, those friendship bracelets that were that like plastic and you'd learn all those knots and you'd have to like you'd wear them on your ankle or you'd stack them up your arm. Those were pretty cool. Oh, these are good things. A little further down were the inflatable furniture, number 27. That I don't remember that. Oh my gosh. I promise you my sister had an inflatable like oversized chair and nothing makes you feel like a chubbier girl in high school than when you're in shorts and you're trying to get out of a low inflatable plastic chair it's like (laughs) 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 I just remember how awful it was you'd have to like roll out because you couldn't actually like lift yourself Those were not good. That sounds anyway, awful. Yeah. Oh, just like those those sun t- those suntan chairs. Oh, and that were made out of rubbery plastic. Yeah, eventually, they get so saggy that like like they stretch at the bottom, so it's like your butt. Just like- I do remember those. They were so uncomfortable to sit in because they were made out of a rubbery plastic, and when you were laying in the sun and hot, it would get really sticky and slimy underneath you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, like, I could not handle those. And the head and the legs were like clickers. So like you could go up one and go up one, but then you couldn't go back down unless you tried to like fold yourself in half to like get it to release or you'd have to get off in order yep. to like fold and then the fix head it. down. Ugh. Anyway, that was a good trip down plastic memory lane. Oh, that was so awesome. I'm yeah. so glad you picked that as a topic tonight. Yeah, something good, funny to think about and reminisce about. Happier times, right? Than no kidding. Things going on right now. Life is a little chaotic right now, but it will go back to normal. We are very strong people. We're resilient people. We always find our way back to the happiness. And if you right. struggle to find your way to the happiness, just join us because we'll make you happy. Right. That's right. 
Well, that is all that I have prepared for today. How about you guys? Well, I have an announcement. I oh found a bin of children's stories. I don't know where we picked them up, if some of them were from when I was a kid. So every other night around 8 o'clock p.m., I am going to be doing story time with Stephen. Oh, I love and it. And I will be live broadcasting from the Stephen Nicole Show with producer Bert Page. It is definitely child appropriate. And we will be reading a quick bedtime story around 8 p.m. So if you need to get rid of your kids for 10, 15 minutes, plop them in front of a phone, iPad, computer, click on the Stephen Nicole Show page, and join us around 8 o'clock every night. And that can be a great way for you to have 15 minutes of solitude while we read your kids a book. Oh, I love it. And I think... In addition to Storytime with Steven, we are hoping to do another live broadcast later this week. I think for a while now, um, and I will deeply miss being in the studio, but for a while now, I think we are going to be using this format um, for uh, quite a few of our next broadcasts. And so we hope to do another one maybe later this week. Um, but yes, you know, we will see you Wednesday yeah. or Thursday. Yeah, give us some feedback. Let us know um, what you think and if this is is uh, good for you because <laughs> it's good for me. Anyway, let us know what you guys think. And uh, we love you all. We hope you're all taking care of yourselves and one another. Um, check on your older friends and your older neighbors and, you know, make sure that everybody's um, okay in your world because we definitely hope that you're okay yep and in addition to taking care of others take care of yourself absolutely, absolutely. and at the end of the day you have to remember that we love you we love brie and we, oh no no Here we, okay do over do over do over okay right are, are you guys ready? so let, let, let's just uh let's do a practice run we will go steve bert trude and nicole okay. are we ready Ready. Okay. Remember, at the end of the day, we love you. We love us. And we love Bree. We did it. Yay. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great night. We will see you on Wednesday or Thursday. And don't forget to tune in 8 o'clock every other night for Storytime with Steven. With that, peace out.